on guys welcome back to another episode of the campaign grind i am pedro diaz i am your host and we are here with ray valdez he is your host as well what's going on brother fantastic he's fantastic I love to see the elections that are behind us now. This the elections that are done, elections. but you know what? We actually got elections coming up now in, in a couple of months, so yes. we're going to be talking about that on this episode. But before we get started, guys, once again, thank you very much for the love and the support. Thank you guys very much for tuning into this week's episode of The Campaign Grind. As I start every single episode, this podcast is for everybody. We do not discriminate, or this campaign grind is for everybody. We do not discriminate. Whether you're an entrepreneur, you're a politician, you're a candidate, you're a lobbyist, whatever it is you are, I guarantee you're going to find some gold nuggets and some useful information on these episodes. So we do not charge one single cent for these episodes. These episodes are 100% free. The only thing I do ask is that if you find any value whatsoever, guys, please share it with your friends and your family. Well, and we have some people who are, have joined us live. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know, we, uh, you, what, you probably want to mention that absolutely. Uh, we, we actually started getting that we are live people. and that they should uh, be calling in with the questions. If yeah. they have any absolutely. suggestions or questions, or or if they're thinking of running, if they're thinking office. of running, yeah. Here we got uh, Laura. Thank you very much for tuning in, Laura. Melissa, thank you very much for tuning in, Melissa. We got Mike up in Tampa. Thank you very much, Mike. We got Angel, Angel from Orlando. That's another guy. Thank you guys very much. As always, if you guys have any questions, please comment below. We'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions live, direct, and in full effect. So we actually got a couple different topics lined up for you guys today. Um, one of the, the, the topics I want to talk about, Ray, and I want you to tune, t chime in on this too, is because you were a candidate before, is a lot of candidates, especially first-time candidates, when they, when they come to us or, or we start working with them, it's very... I guess it's very new. They're not they're not used to this. They've never done this before, so you really can't expect much. But they always ask, okay, well, I know I need to canvas. I know I need to knock on doors. You know, how do I figure that out? And I'm going to tell you guys exactly how to figure out which doors to knock on. But I want to hear it from somebody that, <coughs> that was a candidate just recently, and it was his first campaign. So when you first ran for office, Ray, you, everybody knows that you need signs, you need to knock on doors, you need to talk to voters. What or how did you determine who you were going to knock on, whose doors you were going to knock on? Who were you going to visit? Well, uh, you know, it, uh, the uh, Department of Elections mm -hmm. has a lot of information on, on, information on, the, on the voters, yeah. registration, and uh, people who have voted in the previous elections and the percentage of times that uh, a voter has voted, if he's voted on local elections, in general elections, you know, presidential elections and so on. And that is very important in, in, in letting you know, uh, you know, who you should uh, 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 canvas, yeah. the, the people that uh, you should uh, you know, direct yourself to first. Absolutely. Uh, however, you know, that to me, now that I was a candidate, has to be it's really a very small part of a campaign strategy of the whole campaign. I agree. And to that, you know, I, I, uh, I really, you know, would say you're the best person uh, really uh, uh, capable of explaining, you know, yeah. uh, this, this issue. Absolutely. Uh, you know, knocking on doors is always important. You have face to face contact with everyone in the community, in the district, in the area that you're running for, and so on, is very important. As well as it is very important to know, you know, the, uh, the issues as a candidate, yeah. you know, the issues that uh, affect your area, that uh, the issues of concern in your area, whether it's transportation or uh, street potholes, immigration, uh, taxes, mm -hmm. and so on. And you should be well versed if you're thinking of, uh, you know, campaigning for an elected office, you know, so that uh, you can answer those questions when you go to a town hall meeting or you go to a fundraising meeting and so on. Absolutely. Today, uh, with the social media, the big important part it, it plays in our lives, people are more informed, yeah. you know, than ever before. So sometimes, uh, not only, well, they might not know, but they want to know how you feel about an issue, 
and they might know about the issue, but they might be quizzing you also. Absolutely. They might want to know if you know, you know, or if you're on the same page as they are in your community, if they if they are going to vote for you to represent them. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's a, that's a very important part, I think. Yeah. But that's it. To me, that's a part of the candidate. But, uh, you know, knocking on doors and mailers and social media, and all these other things, it's a, it's a big round of, you know, all kinds of issues and, and very competitive yeah. uh, part of the campaign. And uh, you want to be ahead of the other candidates. To that effect, I say, don't sell yourself, yourself short, hire a campaign strategist. I agree. I you agree. Know, it's not a manager, a campaign strategist, because you need everything to fall into place timely. You know, it's just not going out and knocking on doors off time. You got your absentee ballots going out. You got your mailers going out. You got to, you know, combine everything so that, you know, you get positive results of your work and your expenses. No, I, I agree. And and now I, I know you touched on, on another topic we're going to be talking about later, which is the canvassing. I mean, not the canvassing, what the candidate should know. Believe it or not, just because you're a candidate doesn't mean that you don't got to worry about anything. You got to know. You basically got to know your shit, um, but when, when it comes to targeting and the canvassing um, and the candidates that ask, you know, how do I figure out who I'm going to target? Um, like Ray said, you could go to your Department of Elections, either the county um, or your city, your town, your clerk, and ask them for a voter file. Okay. Now, the issue that we have with that is that a lot of that information, believe it or not, you think that it's coming from the county, it's coming from the city, it's coming from the state, it's 100% accurate. Um, I usually find those or that data to be much less accurate. So what we do is, yes, we purchase it from the county, the state, the city, whoever, whomever it is that we can purchase it from. Um, but we also you know, purchase from a third party and cross-reference the data to try to get as close as possible to 100% accurate information for these voters. Because at the end of the day, once you're canvassing, your phone banking, your mailing, that's time, that's resources that is spent on these voters. Mm -hmm. So the little resources and time your campaign has, you want to make sure you're targeting those actual voters. And, so, your, and your budget. Your budget, budget is very exactly. important. But, uh, but, you know, I mentioned the list because, you know, uh, that's part of, uh, I guess I say, a uh, opening part on yeah. a campaign to know where you're going but I would say that using that list or using those names and combining that with a total strategy of the campaign that's a whole different game yeah. and now I know that because you know I failed to know that when I ran yeah. and I failed to really have a, uh, a positive strategy from the beginning yeah you know, and uh, I think that before you start spending money, you have to uh, get your strategy together, get your, you know, your plan together and so on. And I think that like everything else, you know, a lot of people starting a business, like, like you know, this is a, you know, starting to run a business, a campaign. Sometimes you have to campaign for a year, two years. Yep. It's a lot of time, a lot of money spent and so on. So, you know, a lot of people, they say, oh, I'm going to open this restaurant or this coffee shop or whatever kind of business they like and they've had some experience. Yeah. And they go and put their money into the place and they decorate and fix up the place and buy tables and chairs and all this. And six months later, the place closed down because they didn't really plan or have a strategy or have uh, the knowledge that it takes to run a business and running a campaign. It's, it's the same a, exact thing. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. You don't want to run out of money and you want to combine everything, you know, your budget with your strategy and the important issues. Yeah. No, like, like I tell all of our clients, at the end of the day, your campaign is a brand. Your campaign is a business and you got to treat it as such. Instead of selling a product or a service, you're selling an individual, you're selling a platform on what you're going to do. So you need to treat your campaign just as you would treat your business or any other business. Um, at the end of the day, you are McDonald's, you are Coca-Cola, you are Starbucks, you are a brand. And you need to make sure that you stay consistent and you treat your campaign as such. Um, a lot of candidates, what I've come to realize is they, they a lot of them don't have the time or say that they don't have the time to really go out and canvas. Mm -hmm. So what they go off and do is they 
hire people to go off in Canvas for them, or they get volunteers. Now, I'm going to give you guys, I guess, the good, the bad, and the ugly on pay, paid workers and uh, volunteers. Um, from my experience, Ray, I don't really like working with campaign volunteers. The reason why is because I can't get mad at them if they do not show up on time or do their job uh, appropriately. Uh, and then the paid workers, it's a little different. Um, as you know, in every single city, in every single town, in every single state, you always have the typical campaign workers. And what ends up happening is every single campaign has to hire these same workers. But what happens is that these people, just because they were really good 15, 20, 30 years ago, doesn't necessarily mean that they're good now. Um, so you need to make sure that if you're going to hire canvassers or hire people to work on your campaign, you train them. Because at the end of the day, these are the same people that are talking to the voters that can potentially put you in or out of office. Um, so you need to make sure that they are trained canvassers, that they know what they're talking about, that they're presentable, and they're just not whomever you pick up off the street that's willing to work 50 bucks a day, 30 bucks a day, 100 bucks a day, or anything like that. At the end of the day, you get what you paid for and you're gonna get what you put into it. If you put in shit, you're gonna get shit and you're not gonna get elected. What's your take on that? Uh, I agree with you 100%. Uh, again, you know, it's, uh, it's so important that uh, when you are uh, planning to run for office, uh, you you make an initial plan to have, you know, uh, of what you want to do, why you're running for office, you know, who you are, mm -hmm. that, you know, that you're really qualified to run for the position that you're going to to uh, campaign for and that uh, and that uh, you live in the in the uh, right location according to the re residency requirement and all that and that you interview maybe a couple of uh, 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 campaign managers and uh, strategists because a consultant campaign consultant is more important than a manager really you know you have to build the whole the whole strategy from the beginning. Yeah. You cannot start uh, when you're halfway through your campaign. You should get your your uh, everything put together all at the same time from the beginning and follow a plan, a very stringent plan. No, I, I agree. Um, and what, what Ray was saying, because a lot of people are so confused with campaign manager, consultant, strategist, and stuff like that. Campaign managers, you got to think of them as office managers. They got to deal with the day-to-day -day BS of the campaign. Make sure the canvassers are walking. Make sure the phone banks are working. Make sure the mailers are going to go out on time. Make sure that things are going to be getting done in a timely manner. Like I said, an office manager overlooking everything. Then your campaign consultant or your strategist is basically the one that's putting together the strategy, putting together the plan and how you're going to execute. Then the campaign manager, right. the campaign consultant or the strategist works with the campaign manager and then they de determine who they're going to hire to do the meetings, who they're going to hire for the phone bank, so on and so forth. So the campaign manager overlooks the day-to-day -day operations of the campaign. The campaign consultant or the campaign strategist develops and puts together that blueprint to success. Um, well, I, what I learned also through your practice and from seeing you uh, put together, uh, you know, the strategy for several campaigns and so on, it is that, uh, you know, uh, what steps go in at what time, yeah. you know, how important it is that you're, you know, you're going to that you're going to that's a, no it's okay uh, that you're going to have everything falling into place in a timely manner yeah that is not just you know it's not just sending out information in the mail it's just not going to a radio program it's just, it's just no it has to be very much time uh, uh, basis everything has to be in place uh, and uh, remember, all the time, most of the time, you have two, three, five people running for the same office. Yes. And that is a very, very competitive situation. Yep. You can't take it lightly. No, you can't. You have to have a strategist that is going to make sure that, you know, 
you're heating, as you're saturating, that you're, you know, that you're, everything is going to fall into place at the right time. I agree. I agree. Uh, guys, we have been getting our questions. We have them. We're going to get to them. Uh, before we get to the question, I want to let you guys know, you could get this copy of the Campaign Grind booklet on Amazon.com. Just go to Amazon.com, search for Campaign Grind. This is the Campaign Grind booklet. Yes, it's a legit physical, physical book. It's got its own little ISBN number. Um, go on Amazon.com. Purchase it. It's less than 10 bucks if I'm not mistaken. It'll make a great uh, stocking stuff for this season. Campaign Grind booklet on Amazon.com. Check it out, review, and thank you guys very much. Iris, we got questions. Yes, Erica wants to know um, if she knocks on a door and they are undecided, should she go back? And if so, how like how far along should she go back and okay. check on? So Erica, it, it's, if, if you knock on a door and the voter seems to be undecided, I think that you should definitely go back. Uh, not only personally, I think you should call them personally, I think you should text them personally, I think you should email them personally. You need to be pounding them so once they get their absentee ballot in the mail or once they get uh, to the voting precinct, they remember how persistent Erica was and they're going to go off and vote for Erica or your candidate whenever they have to go out uh, and, and make that decision. So I think that you pound them. You engrave your candidate's name or your name in their brain, so once they get that ballot, they know exactly who they're going to vote for. And a lot of people ask me, oh, you, um, you know, why are we doing this so repetitively? Why are we doing it uh, over and over and over again? And I'm a big believer of, of saturation. I'm a big believer of pounding and engraving people's message. Um, it's actually gotten to a point that I know that we're doing a good job when our phone bankers are phone banking voters and the voters say, if you call me one more time, we're not going to vote for X, Y, and Z candidate. How do I know we're doing a good job? Because they recognize, the voter recognized the phone number and associated that phone number with this particular candidate and they, we didn't have to mention the candidate's name. So that's a type of recognition I want to build for my candidates. So yes, knock on that door the next day, call that person the next day, text them the next day, email them the next day. Does it matter? Pound, 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 and make sure that they don't forget who you are. So important. Very important. So important. Uh, and that face-to-face -face contact, uh, is, you should make that, uh, you know, something, uh, think of it so valuable to your winning, uh, you know, your, your campaign. And uh, again, you know, that's a very important, timely piece part of the campaign when absentee ballots go out, yep. or this, that, and so on. So that's where you have to be in contact with your campaign strategist. He knows all the dates, all the times, all the things. And uh, believe me, when, like in my case, there was four other people running for the same position. And, uh, you know, I used to go to a building, and I'd be knocking, and I went to those buildings three, four times, you know, and... Uh, and uh, that's, that's hard work. It's a lot and of work. It's knocking a lot of on work. doors and talking to people yeah. and so on and so forth. But you know, you don't want that just to go. You know, because that has to be in together with your mailers, with your phone banking, with your face door to door knocking on yep. doors. But remember, the other candidates are also doing the same thing, or they the should be doing the same thing, right? You know, and uh, you know, if if you if they are. You know, a lot of people want to take the campaign on their own. They really don't have the finances, et cetera, et cetera. They don't have the experience most of the time. And even if they have the experience, you cannot handle everything yourself. Absolutely not. You know, and so, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's very consequential. It's sure. what is going to be the outcome of your campaign, how to handle yep. all the steps, you know, involved with your campaigning. So that, yep. that saturation like you're saying knocking on that door going back again etc etc are so important i agree yes i just put the book here so you guys could check it out let's see how we could uh product placement that's what this is called perfect prop there we go now we're good we're good perfect all right so going back to what we were talking about about how the candidates should be doing that has our generation gotten lazy or has the new generation gotten lazy um, I believe they have 
as times change, candidates change, campaigns need to change as well. And I believe that the newer generation is or has gotten lazier. The reason why is because they've been focusing more on sending these shiny, glossy mailers to the people's doors. But I am a big believer, I'm a big Hard Knocks fan. I like that grind, I like, hence the name, campaign grind. I like the grind, I like the hustle, I like to outwork and outsmart the competition. I don't want to be in, I don't have competition. I don't want to be in, in the same conversation as people that do the same thing as I do. I want to be in a whole different astronomic galaxy, universe, whatever the hell you guys want to call it. I want it to come to a point where people say, you know what, if we're going to go up against these campaigns, we're going to get our asses kicked because they're going to do things that we're not willing to do or we're not comfortable doing. So I do believe that this generation and newer generations have gotten lazy. The reason why, because they focus on just sending those mailers to the houses, calling the voters, texting the voters, you know, digital ads on Facebook, social media, so on and so forth. But guess what? I'm going to punch you right in the mouth because my candidate's going to go and knock on these doors and talk to these voters personally. These voters are going to see the, the sweat dripping down the voter, the, the candidate's forehead. They're going to smell the sweat off this candidate. They're going to touch this candidate. And this is going to create that one-on-one -on -one connection with these voters that's not going to get changed or their minds are not going to get changed because they receive a big, shiny, glossy mailer in the mail saying, come and vote for me. These candidates, I guarantee you, are going to outwork and out-hustle, and that is exactly what you need to do in any single campaign. As I said before, your campaign's got to be run as a business, so you got to be willing to do what other people aren't willing to do. Knock on these doors, make these phone calls, text these people from your personal phone so you don't miss the call, so you don't miss the response. Do what your competition is not willing to do. One way that I tell my clients that they know they're doing the right thing is if they think they shouldn't be doing it, then you should definitely be doing that because your competition is going to be thinking the same exact thing and you'd have to get out of your comfort zone. Once you get out of your comfort zone, that's when the magic happens. Totally. And I can, uh, and you know, in reference to that, I can say that uh, I know candidates in the past that you know them too that they have lost a, a couple of years of campaigning yeah. uh, because they didn't hire strategists, they didn't do their due diligence the right way, they didn't strategize the campaign properly, and to tell you the truth, I know one of them lost for by 500 votes oh, yeah? on a uh, <laughs> state representative yeah. office yeah. that was uh, uh, tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. To lose the, a campaign for by 500 votes that's horrible yep. because you know if you say well you know I lost by because I got twenty percent and the other guy got eighty percent of the votes that's then okay. you get your ass kicked you know that you that you get, but to say you lost the campaign like we know but before they got elected because the the second time around when you strategize the campaign that's when they won that's when they got elected but they didn't know that it's the same as you know I've known candidates that run seven times nine times but they always did the same thing and they did it the wrong way and until they really strategized the campaign made a real plan worked i don't want to you know again put, keep pushing the issue but the fact that worked with you on the thing you know i remember you know one time that you, you actually gave gave somebody some advice and you told you know you got to cover this area you got to do this. He wasn't your client. I know, you know, you were trying to help him out yeah. uh, in a friendly basis and, he, you know, asked some questions and I remember his name and the person very well. And you said to that person, spend another one, two thousand bucks, do this mailing, walk this area, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And that person lost that campaign by uh, le less than 500 votes. Less than 500 votes. And yep. it, I, I, I say to myself, wow, that is horrifying, you know, to be that close yeah. and to miss it by so, you know, such a small margin of yep. votes because you didn't do that. Yep. You know, if you say, well, you know, I, 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 I strategize, I, I, I spend the bucks, Maybe you're going to spend less in some of these other areas, but hire a campaign consultant. Yeah. Make sure that you know that you follow the advice 
They, you know, they do this on a regular basis. You do it one in, once in a lifetime. Absolutely, that's what I tell everybody. But, you know, and then you cannot handle everything. Yep. You need all the help you can get to have a real organized campaign. Yep. Either you know, do it the hundred percent or don't, don't do, do it. it at all. Yeah. I agree. I agree. You know. um, before guys, we are getting towards the tail end of the show. But before we go, question was, do can you fundraise while canvassing? And like I was saying, I'm a big fan of this hard knock, old school, traditional type of campaign strategy. Um, but before I answer that, what's your take on it, Ray? Can you fundraise while canvassing? Uh, you can, but I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it? No. Why would you do it? Because I, would, because I, would, I wouldn't want to divert the <laughs> attention of the voter. I'm, I'm, I'm in the district or the area I'm running in, yeah. when I'm face to face with them, <laughs> to distract them or to maybe get any kind of a negative uh, input and, uh, and thought from that person, when I'm at their door asking them for their vote, you know, and I'm saying, you know, I'm the best candidate uh, yeah. and these are the issues or, you know, and I'm exchanging uh, uh, information on the issues with that voter at their at their house door for me to impromptu ask them for a so, donation for so my campaign. As I said, I would before, invite them. I would invite them and say, you know, I'm going to have a fundraising or yeah. I'm going to have this and, uh, you know, but uh, one of the local uh, places or clubs or whatever it is. Yeah. But I, I, I wouldn't do that. Not me. I don't All think. Right. Guys, know. we have. But I would follow your advice. Though. We have, we have, uh, we have less than one minute. We have less than sixty seconds. So my quick response is yes, yes, and fuck yes. The reason why is because you're talking to these voters. They invite you into their house, okay? They invite you into the house. They give you some coffee. They give you some tea. They give you some snack, whatever it is, right? And they invite you into their house. You establish that rapport with the voter. You compromise them. No, you don't compromise them, but you establish that rapport with the voter. What's going to end up happening is they're going to come out and vote for you. Why? Because you sat down, you took the time, you listened to them. And then the icing on the cake is when you ask them for a, for a campaign contribution. And I always tell our candidates to do it. Like I said, if, if you are uncomfortable doing it, that's when you have to do it even more. That's what I was telling you. So once you're talking to that voter, you're in the living room, your feet up on the table. No, don't put your feet up on the table. I'm just kidding. But once you're in the living room, drinking the tea, drinking the soda, drinking whatever they're giving you, so the snacks, that's when you go ask them for a campaign contribution. Don't expect a lot of money. Maybe you get a dollar, maybe you get five dollars, maybe you get 20, 30, 50, whatever you may get, or a check, whatever. But once they do that, you know very well, 100%, that person is going to vote for you. Why? Because they are committed to your campaign, not only because you sat in their, in, their, in their living room, but also because they donated to your campaign, and you asked them for that money personally. Very good. Yeah. Well. So, yes. Yes, you can uh, canvas and fundraise at the same time, and I strongly recommend you do that. Not many people do it, and I guarantee your opponents aren't going to do that. So, yes, you can. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Campaign Grind. As always, once again, you could get this from Amazon.com. Just go to Amazon.com, uh, Campaign Grind. It's less than 10 bucks, perfect uh, um, stocking stuffers for this season. If you have any questions whatsoever, please give us a call. 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010, or shoot me an email, pedro at diazcampaigns.com. Guys, thank you very much for tuning into this week's episode of the Campaign Grind. I am Pedro Diaz, signing out.